The American muscle car wars are a bit stagnant right now in 2020. We haven't seen a new Camaro, Mustang, or Challenger in quite a while. You do have some competition up there at the high end with Dodge releasing all these new Hellcat models. You've got Ford with the new GT500, but Chevy doesn't seem to want to be doing too many updates to the Camaro. We've got the 2021 model here, and the updates are very minimal for this new model year. We've been sent a V6 convertible model with an automatic transmission to test. It's the 3 lt trim, meaning we have all the bells and whistles to test out, but it's definitely not the highest performing Camaro possible. This is more of a cruiser. So let's see what this particular V6 Camaro RS trim is all about. So let's start off with the exterior of the 2021 Camaro. So for this specific video, we've been sent a V6 RS trim. All of the RS trims are the V6 model. We also have an RS appearance package, which I'm going to talk about what that adds a little bit later as I'm doing the walk around. There is a new color available for the 2021 model year. We have it here. It's called Cherry Red Tint Coat. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. It's about $500. I definitely think I would opt for this color if I were doing a Camaro. Now, the Camaro changes its front end depending on which trim level you have. Because we have the RS V6 model, we have this sort of softer front end. I actually prefer this to the SS. Now, in my 2019 Camaro review, I said that I hated the way that front end looked with the black crossbar across the front. And a lot of you were mad at me for calling the Camaro ugly. Well, the very next year, Chevy redesigned it and added a color front end. So who was right on that one? This reviewer right here. So how about that? We've got some black Camaro badge, uh, Chevy badges up here, which is pretty cool. Coming around the side, I mentioned that RS package. That's going to get you these 20 inch alloy wheels. These look gorgeous. Another reason why you should probably get that RS package. You also get this little Camaro badge here. I think that's a pretty cool touch as well. I do like the Camaro convertible compared to the Mustang convertible. I think this top just looks smoother and less lumpy than it does on the Mustang, but it does have a very small back window making rear visibility not that great. Good thing Chevy puts a rear camera mirror on pretty much everything they sell. We do have a nice big spoiler here that's lifted up from the trunk. We have the clear taillights. We've got our little RS badge, another black Chevy bow tie, and we do have some really nice exhaust tips and this v6 sounds surprisingly raspy definitely better than how an ecoboost mustang sounds. all right so now that we've checked out the exterior of the 2021 camaro let's see what's new on the inside and unfortunately there's not much new that you can see i'm going to talk you through the one huge improvement that they've made for 2021 but the interior of the camaro is definitely not the best in the segment you can get very luxurious interiors out of the challenger and the mustang but we are sitting in the 3lt which is the nicest camaro that you can get the most feature packed one and there are some nice touches i don't i don't want to be too critical of GM here. We have this very nice leather wrapped steering wheel with perforations on the side with this sort of bronze stitching. I love how the steering wheel feels. I think this is definitely the best steering wheel available in the segment by far. Better than the Mustang, better than the Camaro. I love the flat bottom nature of it as well. We've got pretty good gauges here. In front of me, I've got my normal tachometer and speedometer and a big digital helper screen in the middle showing me my fuel and all of the things like that. I currently have it showing my range, fuel economy, things like that. I can go ahead over here on this little joystick uh, D-pad and I can go into the performance gauges so I can have it showing battery voltage, my transmission fluid, oil temperature, things like that. So I think this is pretty well done. Mustang definitely does it better though because they offer an all digital display but I think this is as good or better than what you'll get on a Challenger. In terms of materials, so we've got as much leather as Chevy can possibly put in a Camaro. We've got leather here on the doors, leather here on the uppers, but the dashboard is still this very hard, junky plastic. We've got some junky plastic surrounding the infotainment system as well. We do have leather on the gear shifter, but there, there's just a little bit too much plastic in here, at least for me. Uh, the Dodge Challenger has plenty of plastic as well, but I think the Mustang just uses materials just a little bit better than the Camaro does. The seats here 
here are pretty comfortable on the 3LT package. You can opt for a performance seat. I believe that's made by Recaro. I love those seats. They're about $1,500. I would opt for them if I was optioning a Camaro, but I don't know, you're going for the convertible like V6. You probably don't need to spend $1,500 on those seats. These ones are fine. They do have heating and ventilation here. I love the climate controls of the Camaro. They're laid out on one simple ribbon of buttons and we have these cool vents. Uh, you actually control the temperature by sliding this big metal surround on the vents. It's a bit weird that the vents are down this low. I suppose it would be nice if you're holding on to the transmission lever or you have a manual transmission car and you have the nice air blowing on your hand, but it's a little bit weird for when the wheel, when your hands are up here on the wheel, like it's kind of hard to point it all the way up at it. So it's weird that they're mounted that low, but whatever, it's, it's not a huge deal. We have a standard eight inch inch infotainment system. It's the only one you're going to be able to get on the Camaro. I love GM's infotainment system. It is fantastic. The resolution is great. The responsiveness is fantastic. Um, you have your ambient light controls here, which is really cool. Look at all the colors and two-tone colors that we can have here. You can also connect that to the drive mode, which is pretty cool as well. We have Amazon Alexa on here. That's awesome. And I mentioned that there was one big significant update for 2021, and that is that Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are now wireless. My phone is not plugged in. It's sitting in my pocket. There's my Android Auto. So that is awesome. That comes standard on all Camaros for 2021. That is fantastic. Uh, we also have, because we have the 3LT, we have the digital camera mirror, which comes in handy when you have a convertible like this one. I've noticed that I prefer driving with the camera engaged when, you, when I have the roof up because it gives me better rear visibility. And then when I drop the roof down, I switch back to the normal mirror to avoid a glare. Now it's time for the Carbuzz cup holder and practicality index where, oh, I'm sorry, Chevy, you are not going to get a pass from me on this one. I've got my Yeti in here sitting in one of two cup holders here. That is fine. It fits perfectly well. Even if I had a manual transmission, it wouldn't really get in the way of my shifting. However, the cup holder behind it is too small. My Yeti will not fit in it. So I'm guaranteeing unless you have a very small drink, your drink won't fit in that in there as well. Your rear passengers, forget them. They don't have any cup holders whatsoever. You only get very tiny door pockets here that won't really fit anything. There's no storage here in front of the shifter. There's no storage anywhere here. You just get a very, very small center armrest and of course a glove box. There is basically nowhere to put anything in this vehicle. You do have a wireless charger, but it's located very inconveniently behind you between the rear passengers. And I've noticed that my Google Pixel 3 XL does not fit on there and even my camera guy's iPhone doesn't fit on there either so I don't know what it's possibly useful for. Now hopping in the back seat of a Camaro, especially a convertible one, is not going to be great for anybody involved. You just have this one lever that leans the seat forward. And I will note that we have the seat as far forward as it goes just to make filming this segment even possible because you only get a little under 30 inches of leg room back here, which is less than what you'll get in the Mustang convertible. Shoulder room is basically non-existent. I'm bumping into this bulkhead. There's nowhere for me to rest my arm. There are no cup holders back here. The only thing I have is this silly wireless charger that doesn't even fit my phone. And if I did have this seat back in a normal position, I would have pretty much nowhere to put my legs. And as you can see, I'm definitely touching the roof here. It would be a little bit better if the top were down, but it's still not a great car to transport four people comfortably. So trunk space is something you might want to consider with the Camaro because it doesn't do all that well. We've got a very small opening here, so that's going to limit the size of the suitcases you're going to be able to fit back here. And even with the divider down, you only get 7.3 cubic feet of space. Now compare that to the Mustang convertible, which has about 11.4 cubic feet, and the Camaro does not fare well in this category. And then when we put our convertible top up, which is done using this sort of like floor mat thingamabob, you just clip it in here, two clips, and that really divides your trunk space. You're only gonna get maybe a handful of grocery bags in here with this down if you want to go top down and still have a trunk. So in terms of storage space, you can do a lot better than the Chevy Camaro. And now that I've put the divider up in the trunk, I can put the roof down and there is a switch to do that right by the rear view mirror in the car, or you can do it the cool way, which is from the key fob. You just hold this button on here and it should start to go down. 
Mm, there we go. I did get it. You have to hit unlock first and then the roof will start to go down. You do have to hold the button the entire time, which is a little bit tiresome on your finger, but the roof does go down automatically. There are no latches to undo, unlike the Mustang, which is quite nice. And now you can enjoy a top-down experience. So let's get the Camaro out on the road. So time to drive the 2021 Camaro convertible, roof down, temperature is pretty moderate for Florida. So we've got a really nice day out in which to enjoy a really nice convertible sports car. So let's talk about what we've got under the hood first, because there are a range of options available for the Camaro right now, starting with a two liter four cylinder engine. And I have driven that Camaro. It's actually a nice little sports car with that engine. It produces 275 horsepower. You can also go uh, the way that you probably should go, which is the 6.2 liter V8 engine with 455 horsepower. Or if you want to be really crazy, you could get the ZL1 with 650 horsepower. That's the only Camaro I haven't driven at this point is the ZL1. I've heard it's basically crazy, but um, you know, there is the GT500 that actually has more power than that now. Obviously the Hellcat has more power than that. So if you want just the most amount of power, those are gonna do it better. Uh, we have the mid-level engine here, the V6, which is what you're gonna get on the RS Camaro no matter what you do. It's a 3.6 liter V6, and it's interesting because Ford no longer does a V6 on the Mustang. So the Camaro is kind of, uh, alone in this segment. I mean, I guess the 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 uh, Challenger also offers one as well, but this one is definitely faster and more powerful than the one you're going to get in the Challenger. So here it produces 335 horsepower and 284 pound-feet of torque. So let's see what that does when I go ahead and put my foot down here. Nice. I really like how this engine sounds. It's smooth, it has a nice growl to it. We've got the 10-speed automatic transmission, which is about a $1,400 option. This is a really, really nice transmission. I drove it recently when I tested the GMC Sierra. It's just a great automatic, shifts smooth. You never really notice it too much in traffic. It shifts very quickly when you put it in manual mode as well. The one thing I'll say with this particular V6 engine, it's not paired up quite as nicely to the transmission as the V8 is, because the V8 just has so much more torque. With only 284 pound-feet of torque, you can catch the Camaro feeling flat-footed just a little bit. It just doesn't have that low down grunt. This engine loves to rev. I'd really love to drive this V6, this V6 engine with the manual transmission. I think that would be a really nice combination. It might allow you to take a little bit better advantage of the power. But with the V6 engine and an automatic transmission, you're going to hit 0 to 60 in about five seconds with the coupe, maybe a little more with the convertible because it is, of course, heavier. The convertible is not the one you're going to get for the outright performance benefits, and you're probably not going to get a V6 car anyway, is if what you're chasing after is the highest performing Camaro you can possibly get. You're probably gonna want an SS with the 1LE package, with a coupe, with a manual. That's the way you're gonna wanna go if you're a true enthusiast who's gonna track your Camaro. The way that Chevy configured this Camaro, this RS convertible 3LT package, it's a cruiser. It's got all the luxury options, not really a lot of the performance. So let's talk about how it does as a cruiser. It's, you know, it's got four seats, although I showed you barely four seats. It rides very well. This has like sports suspension for a Camaro, but it does not ride uncomfortably. I would not feel uncomfortable in this on a long journey. Obviously with the roof down, it's nice. I can enjoy some sun. With the windows up, you're not gonna have too much wind buffeting. So it's pretty good in that respect too. And and the thing I'll say about the Camaro convertible specifically compared to the Mustang convertible is that I do think the Camaro is better as a convertible than the Mustang is. We have the fully power top that you don't have to do a latch like the Mustang that is totally old school and kind of janky. And the roof looks nicer uh, when up than the Mustang. The Mustang kind of looks lumpy um, and it's definitely not as quiet and refined as the Camaro. So I will say that as a convertible, as a cruiser, 
I think the Camaro does better. And now let's talk about it as a sports car, because that's another area where in, until you get to like the ZL1s and even you know the GT500s, the Camaro shines as a sports car. This is not a muscle car. This is actually a sports car. So we don't have too many drive modes. I have my mode controller here. All we have is tour, sport, snow and ice. So I just put it in sport. Let's see what it'll do now. I love that engine, it sounds pretty good. The steering is tight as a drum. So much balance here. I love the alpha platform that the Camaro is built on. Just a little bit of body roll. I can control it easily. I have so much feel through the steering wheel. This is fantastic. This is not a muscle car, this is a sports car. I love it, it's fantastic. It's really nicely balanced. Because I don't have too much torque, I never feel like I'm gonna get out of control with the power. I can put it down. I got a little sideways there, but it caught it easily. And then I can just plant my foot. Oh, yes. I love this. This is really nicely balanced. I think I would definitely be having more fun if it was a coupe with a manual, maybe with the 1LE package, but even as it sits, I'm, I'm enjoying this Camaro to no end. It's great. It revs, it revs really high. It goes to about 7,000 RPM. You know what this feels like? I'm gonna make a very weird comparison that might shock you here. This reminds me of an E46 BMW M3, the one built from 2001 to 2006. It's a six cylinder Cooper convertible, rear wheel drive, sports car with four seats, you know, nice revving six cylinder engine that sounds pretty good. You can either get it with a manual or in this case, an actually good automatic transmission. This is the modern day E46 M3. If you were looking for that experience, but you didn't want all of the maintenance costs associated with a decade old BMW, you know, M car, this is fantastic. Um, I really do like it. I'm surprised. I wasn't expecting to like the V6 Camaro. I know a lot of you out there are gonna say, no, 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 you can't order a Camaro unless you're gonna order a V8. But I think, especially if you're just gonna use this car for cruising, the V6 is a great way to go. And even if you're just looking for a nice autocross car, manual, V6, 1LE package, I think you'll be on your way. So that was the 2021 Chevy Camaro. Pricing starts at just under $26,000, but we've got the convertible, which causes a massive price jump to about $32,500. Now the $6,500 question is, would I personally opt for the convertible? The answer is no. I do love convertibles, but for $6,500, I think I would be much better off with the coupe. Now, if you want the V6, that's gonna add about $1,500. I think that is a worthy upgrade from the four-cylinder turbo. You can get the automatic for about another $1,500. I would get the six-speed manual, but it's a very good automatic transmission. Now, if you want the 3LT convertible, that's the one with all the bells and whistles, that's gonna be about $37,500. And as you see it configured with the V6, with the RS package, and the automatic transmission, this tester rings in at about $44,600, which is somewhat reasonable for a 335 horsepower convertible with a ton of bells and whistles. I enjoyed this car a lot more than what I expected to with the V6 engine. It kind of reminds me of a modern day E46 BMW M3. And if you do have like an older BMW, you will be shocked at how well the Camaro drives. It's reliable, it has tons of features and modernity. So this is a very good sports car that I do highly recommend. I would just recommend it with a hardtop roof. And as always, if you've liked this video, be sure to hit the like button and the notification bell to be alerted of our latest videos. And please subscribe, that would go to helping us out a lot. And for more videos like this, you can check out our TikTok where we have little shorter, fun videos as well. We also have an Instagram, we have a Twitter, we have the CarBuzz app where you can keep up on the latest and greatest in automotive news that's available on the iOS store and the Android Play Store. I'll see you next time.